It is the left ventricle that pumps oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. It works hardest and it's the uh, area of the heart that fails most often. And sure enough, my left ventricle was very weak. There were 50 people ahead of me on the heart transplant waiting list. And at six foot five, 280 pounds, it was gonna be difficult to find a match, a perfect match physically. My name is Ken Gardner. At age 64, I had a miraculous, life-saving heart transplant. I was recruited by a few places and I chose the University of Utah to play basketball. Uh, I was two years first team all-conference, one year second team all-conference, and we took second every single year. So I was drafted by Denver Nuggets in the old ABA, the American Basketball Association, and by the Phoenix Suns in the NBA. But Phoenix only took one rookie that year, so I was out of luck. And then things happened where an agent took me to South America and to Europe, and then my European career started. Nef Mark, the number 11. À la récupération, c'était Verov pour Ken Garner, le numéro 9. Pour Plateau qui remplace Egal. Et Garner, Ken Garner qui rajoute deux points. Il reste une minute avant la fin de la première mi So my first two years, we were back-to-back -back champions of France in 1973 and 1974. And I was voted most valuable player in France those two years. And my second year then, we qualified for the European Cup, Champions Cup. And my little town of Berck went to the final four of the European Cup. First time a French team had ever done that in 1974. And so in 2002, I took the early retirement uh, and, um, and I was only uh, 53. So pretty young, so I just figured I was gonna go do something else. Well, two years later in 2004, I had a heart attack. And so they did a bypass surgery and they ended up doing a five bypass surgery. Uh, it saved my life. I got along uh, very well for 11 years. And um, after, uh, after feeling lousy and my heart getting weaker, uh, my I went into a visit with my heart doctor and my heart doctor said, Gardner, you're done. Your heart is shot. You need a new heart. When you get a an organ, they test you for everything. So all of these tests uh, I had done and I was uh, clear and things looking good. And my heart doctor said, we're gonna move you to the top of the list, leapfrog the 50 people ahead of me on the list. And they just needed to do one more test, a colonoscopy. And at four o'clock in the afternoon, the next day, the doctor comes in and says, uh, you have cancer. Three months go by, no chemo, no radiation. They declare me cancer free. Second miracle happened to me in 2013. So I get back on the heart transplant waiting list and four months later, here comes my heart. When you get an organ, it's completely anonymous. Some people never meet the donor. But in my case, six months after I got the heart, I get a phone call 
from Jill Longshore Hall, Nick Longshore's aunt. And Aunt Jill says to me, we know you have our nephew's heart. We know Nick Longshore is your donor. His widow, Caroline Longshore, is here. And Caroline and we would like to meet you. My daughter and I drive out to North Salt Lake to an aunt's home in North Salt Lake. There's 20 family members. Out of the crowd steps a 23-year-old beautiful girl, and we approach um, hesitantly. She puts her head on my chest, and she's listening to her husband's heart beating in my chest. Uh, I don't know. I can't even describe the moment and how profound and touching that was. I would not be here without it. In the last three years since the heart transplant, I've been able to walk my two daughters down the aisle. I've been able to see two new granddaughters born to go along with my 11 others. I have five wonderful children and 13 grandkids. I never would have been able to do those things without this heart transplant.